Ladies and gentlemen in the Shrek Gaming Citycom video, if you're bored with your Haswells and you want something a little bit different, well, Skylake isn't too long away. In fact, supposedly we will be seeing the 6700K as well as the 6600K, which are the i7 and i5s respectively, being released on the 5th of August. That's obviously this year, not next year, before you start panicking. So, I don't think... Many of us are surprised that the release is so close, to be totally honest. But we will be seeing these launched alongside the Z170 boards. And these processors, of course, are aimed at both mainstream and enthusiast. There will be other low power and unlock variants which will start shipping a little bit later on in the month, the 30th. Well, okay, I guess that's technically the end of the month. And then finally, we're going to start seeing other. Uh, bits and bobs as you would expect. Now different regions will possibly get slightly different release dates for various SKUs but theoretically the embargoes will be released, uh, sorry, will be lifted at the similar time frame. So theoretically this might mean that the UK will have a slightly different launch late, uh, date from say Australia or the US just for example but this has not been solidified yet but Certainly between the 5th and, say, the 10th of August, you should, at least according to these uh, rumours from Benchlife, you should be able to just go into your store and say, hey, I want this more specifically. You're probably just going to order the bloody thing from Amazon or something. Now, there will be other uh, solutions which will be introduced later on in the year, 2015. These are more aimed at corporate sectors and supposedly these are going to start being introduced in around October slash November time. So what we do know regarding the processors is we've got the i7 6700K which is of course the quad core design. It has four, it has eight threads. Um, I don't really need to explain what that is because it's basically like say the 2600K the 4770K, pretty much the same. It operates very similarly. It does have 8 megabytes of level 3 cache, supposedly. It has a 4 gigahertz base and boosts um, only up to 4.2, so it's not exactly, it's not even 10%, it's like 5% boost clock, but eh. The chip does, it will be unlocked, however, this is a K derivative, so theoretically, I mean, if your cooling's good enough, maybe if we're lucky, it can go up to, say, 5 gigahertz. And the chip does natively support both DDR4-2133 as well as DDR3-L-1600 MHz. So the 6600K is like the 2500K, like the 4670, just for the sake of argument. The clocks are a little more conservative, actually considerably more conservative in some ways, because the base clock is only 3.5 versus 3.9 of boost, and has also a smaller amount of level 3 cache. It's only got 6 megabytes. Similar memory configuration support as well. Theoretically, this will mean that if an application is single-threaded, or just requires a couple of threads, in other words, less than 4, you still might get less performance even if you clock the process to the same because it will have slightly less cache. But how that works in reality, who knows. There will be other processes, of course, like, say, the 6600, which is exactly the same, but it's not unlocked. So, to be totally honest with you, I think most enthusiasts are going to pay the extra couple of bucks and just go for that because it doesn't make sense not to. There will be some other chips as well. Intel are going to be launching the 4T series. Now, this will be for low power. These chips are supposedly going to be running at just 35 watts of TDP. And this will be a 6700T uh, multi-threaded, which is running at 2.8 gigahertz and 3.6 boost. Obviously... You can see that the clock speeds do suffer because of the TDP here, and it will suffer. Uh, suffer. It will also feature the same amount of cache, and there will also be an i5, um, which is a 6600T, a 6500T, and a 6400T. Whereas obviously there's going to be major differences in the clock speeds. So, is it going to revolutionise? Is it gonna? Is it gonna be the world's first, you know, 
is it going to be like a massive improvement in performance? Is it going to be something where people are going to jump up and down in enthusiastic glee when the, when the process is going to release? Or are they going to be a, eh? Well, it depends on who you ask. Um, because for some of the processors which have an integrated GPU, obviously that will... Uh, support DirectX 12 and the other um, up-to-date APIs, but I don't think many of us care about the IGPs who are buying it for like a desktop gaming system. Let's just be totally honest. You don't really give a crap. What you do care about is from a PC high-performance standpoint, or not even gaming, you might want to use them for, say, oh, I don't know, exporting video or 3D rendering or whatever the hell. The question is, will it be enough of an upgrade? Well, I've heard some rumours, and we've covered them before, of about 10 to 15% IPC improvement. So, in other words, per that clock speed, the process will run about 10% 10 10 faster. So, for sake of argument, you've got 4770K. And you've got, uh, say, the 6700K. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, they're both running at 4 gigahertz. Theoretically, the 6700K will have about 10% performance advantage, which would be pretty much how every generation of Intel CPUs have been handling themselves thus far. It will be, it will be quite interesting if there's a difference between DDR4 and DDR3, and if there's not. Or if there is, how much actually is there? It's possible that it might be a bigger difference if you're using the IGP. I can see that becoming a scenario where, you know, memory bandwidth is certainly going to come into play. On the other hand, it could also be that for high-end gaming, for example, let's say a new game comes out, let's just call it Bob's Shoot'em Up 3000, and that requires... Um, or uses DirectX 12 and maybe you're running a multi-card setup, I could definitely see how each of those 8 threads on, let's say, the 6700K would definitely be taxing the amount of bandwidth, the amount of system bandwidth that you've got. That's just a theory. I mean, I don't know because we don't have the card, the, the CPUs to buy. Now, should you be saving up? Well, here's my argument. If you're going to upgrade right now, if you're going to upgrade and your budget's fairly small, so for example, 250-ish pounds, let's say you're going to buy like an FX6300, uh, an FX 6300, an 8300 setup, something like that, then no, it probably doesn't make any difference to you at all. If, on the other hand, you're going to be plonking down a considerable amount of cash, Let's say you were going to get uh, Intel's 5000 series chip, or you were going to get, say, the Devil's Canyon, like the 4790, or something along those lines. You'd probably be better to wait, because it doesn't make sense to buy now, when, theoretically, there could be very little difference. The only, the only slight concern is that if you want the best performance, you'll probably have to go DDR4, and if you've got good DDR3 memory, you're basically going to have to sell that, or you know, sell or give it to your brother, or whatever the hell, or you know, use it as a coaster, because effectively you won't be able to fit it into the slot unless you're going to be using a lot of love and a hammer. So that's not really going to do you much good. Um, finally, what we know is Intel will be ready in Cannon Lake, which is next year, and we know Zen as well as coming out next year too. So, if you've got, say, a 5000 series system, or you have a good, uh, let's say, Haswell system, and you're on a fairly tight budget, or your GPU's not amazing, or you don't have a great screen, and you're purely gaming, personally, I would probably say... Even if it's a 20% increase in performance over what you've got now, is it going to make that much of a difference when most games are GPU bound when you turn on all the whistles and bells? Probably not. But those are just my pennies. So personally, if you've got a really good setup already and you don't have an upgrade itch, you don't have like a billion pounds in your bank, you might be better just to kind of hold off till then. On the other hand, if you've got an older processor, say 2500k, just for the sake of argument, not picking on it, and you've got the money, then yeah, I can see a scenario where 
even a 15% jump over has, well, certainly has some benefits. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.